Lord. All right, guys, today is Wednesday, November 9th. We're going to go over some script training today. We're going to be working on the seller script and kind of going, uh, doing a deep dive into some of the fundamentals of, you know, what to ask for, what to say, and essentially how to qualify, you know, sellers. Um, similar to when you're working with buyers and we use like the LP mama script, you know, where we're asking some kind of the, the universal qualifying questions. There's a script that we've developed with sellers as well, where they're the same type of questions. It just only applies to the seller. So we're going to go over that and I'm going to share a document. This document is in uh, the Google drive and the team resources. It's called the SQS. If you were to just search for SQS, you can find it. If you, uh, I would definitely download it, keep it in front of you, print it out, um, and we'll do a little bit of role play. Um, but let's kind of break it down, guys, and kind of go through some of the points. So when you're working with a seller, just because someone says, yeah, I'm interested in selling or I'm thinking about selling doesn't mean that it is a qualified seller. It doesn't mean it's someone that we would want to work with. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's someone that would be willing to do what it takes to get their property sold especially in today's market where the market is shifting and, you know, it's taking a little longer to sell homes and, and stuff like that. Sellers need to be even more motivated today if they're going to be putting their home on the market, you know, because there's needs to be like the expectations need to be set. So it's important that you ask these questions to gauge whether a seller is motivated to gauge, whether the seller is, is someone that you would want to pursue. Um, and, and really, you know, try to push the deal forward, right? So some of the things that are important, and these are always gonna be questions that you need to keep, you know, you need to learn this, you need to memorize this, you need to make this part of your, your conversation when you talk to any particular seller. Number one, and this is probably the most important one, is why are you deciding to sell? So you're, look, you're asking about their motivation and their timing. Why are you deciding to sell your home and how soon do you hope to have your home sold? Uh, why is this important? Who can raise their hand and tell me why it's important to ask this question? To see how motivated they are? To see how motivated they are. To see how exactly why, see how motivated they are. And- To understand the time frame. So you can identify a time frame, right? How, how quickly they want to move, right? And you can know what to recommend. That's correct. But why is it important to know how motivated someone is? Let's dig a little deeper. Well, it's a big change in their life. So they get understanding where they are at. And then that way you can kind of see how you can help them out. Yeah, that's a great answer. So because this is a big move, it's a big change in their life, right? Selling a home, you got to understand when someone's going to sell their home, they don't just wake up one day and say, hey, let's just sell our home, right? It's something that they come, they come to a decision over time, right? They've been thinking about it. Uh, there's got to be a reason, right? So when understanding the motivation is you're trying to gauge, is there a big enough reason why someone would go through the hassle of selling their home? Because selling a home, is a hassle. It's a project, right? There's many things that have to happen, you know, from planning, you know, what you're going to do to getting your home ready, to putting it on the market, to having people show up and look through your house and hire an agent and do all the paperwork. And, and then, and then let's say once you get your home sold, you got to move somewhere, right? You got to pack, you got to move, you got to get movers. Like there are, you know, hundreds of steps involved in selling a home, you know? So understanding someone's motivation is allowing you to gauge whether they are gonna be willing to do all those hundreds of steps or not. Because if you got someone that just says, thinks it's a good idea to sell and there's no strong motivation, well then later down the line, you're gonna find hurdles and roadblocks that you run into when they're not willing to do what it takes, right? So. That's why motivation, understanding the motivation is extremely important so that you can best uh, advise them. And then you can also uh, gauge, is this someone that I want to move forward with, right? Um, and we did a listing training 
I think a, a week or two ago, just kind of understanding listings, but just really quick, like why someone would sell. And, you know, there's a lot of reasons, right? It could be death. It could be divorce. It could be they want to upgrade. They want to downgrade. They got a job relocation. Um, there's a ton of reasons why someone would sell. Um, but, but the biggest reason, the reason, if someone says this reason, I would really want to make sure you guys are on high alert. If someone says, I want to sell because it's a good time to sell, that's a tough one because just saying it's a good time to sell without having like a good enough reason or what's going to happen next or anything like that, that means someone is just more chasing the market, right? And what happens is if they don't get the price they want or they don't, you know, get the expectations they want, they're not going to be willing to, to make the move forward. So be very, very cautious when someone says it's all about the money or they're just selling because it's a good time, because those are the people that can immediately change their mind and decide not to sell. All right. So just be very, very cautious. Um, Diana wrote, see if they are serious, don't waste your time and money. And that's the other thing too, is when you take on a seller who is not motivated, it actually ends up costing us time and money because there are things that we do, you know, from getting the home ready, whether we're paying for staging, photography, you know, all the administrative, you know, resources that we put to the, the sale, having our admins go out there and, and spend time and all that stuff. And selling a home, there's actually, you know, it can cost several thousand dollars to tens of thousands of dollars to get, you know, get a house ready to plan it and market it properly. So not only are you wasting time, but you can also be wasting money if you take on a seller who's not motivated. So I'm spending time on this one, guys, because I think out of anything, this is, this is one of the, if this doesn't like, if there's not a good enough reason, then you don't pass go, you don't collect $200, you don't go on to the next one, right? So you really, really got to peel the onion, just like I am, um, and go deep on this one. Any questions, guys? Feel free to ask questions. I want to make sure this is interactive. Feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question about motivation or timing or, or any feedback. All right. Number two, what is the plan? What will happen after you sell? Are you wanting to buy another home? Where would you like to move to, right? This is extremely important. If someone's going to sell, you know, you got to figure out, all right, well, what's the next step as well? Because all that is going to affect, you know, the sales process, right? If we know they need to sell and buy another property, well, then we're going to have to time that out, right? You know, do they want to sell this one and buy another one immediately? Do they want to do it at the same time? Do they want to uh, sell and then go rent for a while and then go search for another home? Are they just going to sell and cash out their money and just rent? Are they moving? Right. So all of these this information is extremely important because there has to be a solid plan. It isn't just, I want to sell. It's what's going to happen after I sell and what are the next steps that are going to follow? Um, next one, condition of property, right? Can you tell me about your home? Have you done any upgrades? Is there anything that you think needs to be fixed before selling the property? Right. You want to understand what you're working with. Right. You want to understand what the product is like. Right. And a seller will be able to immediately tell you, you know, because they know the home better than anybody else. They can immediately tell you, yeah, you know, the home needs to be remodeled or, yeah, it needs to be painted or, yeah, I just did this or I just did that. We just fixed these things. So knowing what sort of condition of the property, you know, then you'll be able to make recommendations. Do we need to get our contractor out there? Do we need to come take a look at the property and give you some recommendations on what needs to be fixed or what we recommend to improve the marketability of the property, right? Because what we want to do is we want to make sure when we do put the property on the market, we put our best foot forward, the property is dialed, it looks great, and we're able to sell it the fastest and for the most money because we did you know, this sort of preparation before putting it on the market. Um, feel free to comment. Or raise your hand if you have a question as I'm going. I'm just going to move along through this. And then we'll do a role play kind of going through this, this script. Uh, mortgage. So, hey, do you still own anything on the property? How much do you still own the property? And do you need any of this money from the property to buy the next home? 
right? That's an important question because knowing how much they owe on the property, then you know how much wiggle room they have or how much equity they have, right? You know, if, if they want to sell their house for a million and they owe 900,000, well, that's kind of tight. There's not a lot of equity in there. Once you factor in real estate commissions and all that stuff as well, if the house is paid off and, they, and it's worth about a million, well, yeah, then it's like the seller, of course, wants to get as much as possible, but they're not going to be stuck where I have to hit this exact number to make the sale work, right? So knowing how much someone owes allows you to kind of gauge, okay, is this doable? Are the expectations there? Can we sell it for a price that's going to make them, you know, a certain amount of money? And then you'll be able to understand, you know, how much money they need to walk away with to buy the next home. So that's why if they're buying another home, you want to understand, do they need the money from this sale to buy the other home? Because then they're going to need an exact amount, right? If, they, if they're putting a certain down payment, they need to hit a certain target on this sale. Okay, uh, value. How much do you think the home is worth? Have you checked Zillow or Redfin? Why do you think we would ask, you know, we're the experts, right? We're the ones who can look up the value. But why do you think we would ask a seller, how much do you think your home is worth? Or if they've checked Zillow or Redfin? Just to make, just to be on the same page on where their home is worth to see if they're realistic. And uh, then you can focus more on the CMA to bring them to reality. Correct. That's exactly right. So essentially what you want to do is you want to understand what they already have in their mind and what sort of expectations that they're, they already have. Because let's say Zillow says their house is worth $2 million, you know, and that's not accurate. Maybe we're seeing the house is worth maybe 1.8 million. So there's a $200,000 difference in what we're seeing based off the data and what they think their home is worth in their mind because Zillow said so, right? Zillow and Redfin is not always accurate, right? Any of these online sites are not always accurate. And most of the time, most sellers' expectations are not accurate either. So it's important that we bridge that gap, right? From what they expect or what they think to what is the actual reality of what's selling today in the market, right? But if you're way off, like if, if they're saying, well, I want at least 2 million for my house. And you know, the homes are only going for a million. Well, it's like, okay, that's a million dollar difference. How are you coming up with that number? Once again, you're trying to see if they're realistic, right? Now, if they're in the ballpark of what we think the home could sell for, what, that's someone we can work with, right? If, there's a, if they're in the ballpark, if they're saying 2 million and we're seeing homes sell for 1.8, 1.9, 1.95, .9, we're not too far off. You know, there are some, some comparable sales that can justify, you know, close to their, what their expectation is. And that's a gap that we can bridge a lot easier than if we're off by 500,000 or a million dollars or 300,000, you see, so you want to establish what the client is thinking, and then we'll be able to verify that once we go out there and, and do a, a CMA, a market analysis, that's what that means, and walk the property. Uh, stop me at any time, guys. If there's any questions, type them in the chat or raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask a question. Yeah, maybe give renovation ideas to bring the value up is what Thomas wrote. Um, yeah, absolutely. So that's part of it, right? When we go meet a seller, we're going to say, hey, when we walk the property, when we come out and meet you, we're going to give you some ideas on what you can do to sell your house for the most, you know, whether there's some repairs or preparation that we want to do, we'll be able to give you all those options so that you get the most money and you sell it the fastest. Okay. Um, the next one here, decision makers. Is there anyone else on title with you or any other decision makers? How do they feel about selling? Why do you guys think, let's get someone else, someone else to volunteer because I, not just Thomas or Diana. I need someone else to, to unmute yourself and tell me why do you think we ask, are there any other decision makers or how do they feel about selling? Uh, because you want to know if everyone is on the same page. You don't want to reach to a point and then, as he said, 
it will cost um, time and money. So once everyone is on the same page, it makes the process smoother. Correct. That's 100% the right answer. So knowing if there's any other decision makers and knowing how the other people feel about selling is extremely important because everyone has to be on the same page. And I'll give you an example. There was a listing that uh, one of our agents took last year and they went out there and they got the listing. They're all excited. And two weeks later, uh, they canceled. They canceled the listing, right? He signed it, got all excited. And two weeks later, the listing was canceled. And it was because of that reason is he went out there, he met with the dad, even though the dad was the main decision maker and he was the one on title, the, you know, the property owner, he had his, he had the mom and then he had the two older daughters that lived there in the house that weren't on the same page with them selling. The dad wanted to sell because he felt it was a good time to sell and he wanted to cash out and he saw the market going high. So it was more of just trying to get money from the sale and the mom and the two sisters, the two kids, they didn't want to sell. They were happy with where they were at. They didn't want to go move somewhere else. They were going to school. So even though the dad was technically uh, the person on title and the person that could ultimately make the decision, the family wasn't in support of it, right? And they need the whole entire family to be in support of it so that they can all make the move together, right? So, so the, the family as a whole were the decision makers in the end, right? So, and our agent was, you know, got his hopes up signed the listing and then two weeks later it canceled because he didn't have that discussion with the rest of the family, right? Luckily, we didn't start anything. We didn't start the process. We didn't, you know, but as soon as, as soon as we tried to start the process and we started saying, all right, let's get our contractor out there. We're going to walk the property. We're going to have our stager come out and walk the property. Then they started like dodging him and, and stopped responding. And then it come to find out the dad's like, you know what? My wife's, you know, not happy. My kids aren't happy. I think we're going to hold off. So anytime you're going to meet with someone, when you're booking the appointment, you want to make sure all decision makers are there, right? You want to make sure if it's the husband and wife or the kids, they're all at the appointment, whoever the important decision makers are, because then you'll be able to present to everyone. You'll be able to answer questions for everybody and you'll be able to get everyone on the same page a lot faster. You don't want to meet with the dad and then the dad says, okay, I'll talk to my wife when she gets home from work. And then the dad doesn't present everything that you said the way you did it, right? You're, the dad is not the listing agent. He's not the expert on presenting. He might forget certain things and then that can just prevent you from getting that sale, right? Or the wife may have an agent she knows, you know, and she wasn't at your appointment and you only met with the husband. And he likes you, but the wife has another agent. That's happened to me, you know, and I had to go a second time and win the wife over and finally get both of them on the same page before they decided to work with me. But I almost lost that sale. That was a true story. Uh, okay, questions so far? Give me some questions. I want to make sure we understand this, guys. This is, this is we want to go deep with this stuff. In terms of like the condition of property, like how, how many times in the past uh, have you kind of like had to talk to them and say, hey, how can we like uh, increase the value or, you know, how does the process usually take? Yeah, it's a great question. So with our services, we are a full service broker, you know, full service company. So we help clients, you know, from renovating their home, getting it ready. And I would say 90% of the homes that we sell, we do some level of preparation. Sometimes it's minor, sometimes it's major. Sometimes it's just going up and, and cleaning up the yard, right? Maybe the yard doesn't look too good. We go and do a little bit of landscaping. Uh, a lot of times just a fresh coat of paint goes a long way, having new paint on the inside and out. That's something we do very common. And then we have other circumstances where we go in there and we'll actually do you know, some major repairs. We'll renovate the kitchen, the bathroom. It all depends on what the plan is for the client and what the client wants. You know, there's some clients that they don't have the ability to have you renovate because they still live there. There's some clients where it's like, no, you know, we'll, we moved out already. You know, we're going to stay over here. Or we have a rental property or we we're going to, 
you know, move out and we want you, we want to get the most money possible. So we want you guys to go in there and clean up the property for us. Um, so the way we present it is, hey, when we come out there, we're going to discuss the different options you have when you sell your property. There's different ways. We can sell it as is. We can prep it. We can do some renovations. And depending on which way you choose, you know, there might be a, an opportunity to make more money on the sale and walk away with more profit. So that's the way I position it. And then I say, when we come out there, we'll discuss all your options once we meet you and, and, and walk your property. And then do you already have like a, like a team of like contractors or like people in last campy that kind of help out or how do you do? Yeah, we have multiple there? teams. We have a couple teams that we work with uh, that we've, that they've done hundreds of properties for us. And um, Jason's dad uh, is one of the guys, one of my uncles, Jim, a lot of you guys have met Jim before. He does a lot of work for our clients. Um, there's a couple other contacts that we have. So we have everything. We have the whole team. We have contractors, plumbers, landscapers, painters, everything. So that's the great part of our team is we have our, all these resources already built in. And the great thing, guys, is that a lot of our, our contractors will do the work with no upfront cost to the seller or minimal upfront costs to the seller. You know, and that's a huge, huge benefit because let's say we go into a property Let's say it's going to cost $20,000 to do the repairs. The contractor will do the work and then the client pays at the end once the house sells. But by us doing that 20,000 of repairs, the home sold for $80,000 more than it would have sold, right? So the client makes $60,000 and didn't have to put any money out of pocket, you know? So uh, that is really a huge, huge benefit, right? So you want to know these things so that when you're talking to people, you can start planting those seeds on why it's important for us to meet and why we're a team that you want to work with because we have all these resources. So any, anything you can think of, guys, when it comes to buying or selling a home from attorneys, uh, CPAs, financial consultants, you know, contractors, all those things, we have those people, guys. We have all those people. Um, that we've worked with and we've built relationships with over the years. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, Diana, sh share a story. Well, yeah, just what was it like two weeks ago, my cousin referred his past client. And so then we went to look at the property, Blanca and I, and it was like not cared for. The guy already moved to Texas and um, it needed definitely like painting the windows. There was a gap between like this, like, in between like air was gushing through so um jim went in and gave him an estimate for sixteen thousand. started the work on monday and it should be done in a week and so how good did we look to that guy and and he's getting paid at through the close so it was just like that basically that sour seller wouldn't even think about it twice about working with us because he didn't have to do anything he wanted to sell it as is now we're going to get him more money so he wasn't really worried too much about the commission he asked, but he was just like, yeah, I don't see a problem with it. So it does add value. And that is gold. That's it. Yeah. That's an awesome story, Diana. And I, I know Blanca was telling me about it. I think she showed me a picture. The property's looking good. Um, so yeah, I mean, though, that's a huge value guys. When you're talking to your clients is, Hey, this is the value that we bring to the table. When you work with us, we're going to be able to consult you and advise you on all the different areas from how to prep your home, from do we need to stage it? Do we not stage it? You know, professional photography, all of that stuff. Um, you know, and ultimately the end goal is to sell your home faster with less hassle and to get you the most money possible so that you walk away with the most money in your pocket. And when we're able to do that, guys, when we're able to, to pull that off, then we're able to charge our full commission as well because it's an investment, right? The client sees the value in investing in a full service agent like us. And they're not going to, you know, haggle us on the commission because they know in the end we make them more money. Right. So it's not always about what the cost is up front. It's about how much do you walk away with at the end? Uh, so good story, uh, Diana. And we've done that countless times, guys. We've done that many, many, many times for clients. Uh, Okay, so appointment. So let's say you got someone on the phone and you went through all these questions, right? And let's say you, uh, or you met someone in person, you know, and you're trying to go for that appointment. 
This is basically what you need to do to close the appointment at the end. Let me make this a little bit larger. This is the closing, the closing part, right? Uh, so, hey, Mr. Customer, based on all the information, you know, let's say you asked all those questions and everything sounded good, right? And the client seemed realistic and there was a plan and they were motivated and decision makers were there. Uh, hey, based on all the information, I would like to set a time to come to your home and go over all your options with all decision makers. We can show you the best strategy for selling at the highest price and give you a realistic evaluation once we see your home in person. I have tomorrow at two or four available, which one works better for you, right? It's extremely simple, right? The same way that we role played the buyer, like, you know, when a buyer has an objection and you answer their objection and then you just go in for, hey, here's what I recommend. So you can say that as well. Here's what I recommend. Let me come out there, come to your home. We're going to walk the property. We're going to go over all your options, you know, with all the decision makers. We'll show you the best strategy to get you the most money. Uh, and I'll give you a realistic evaluation of, you know, what your home could sell for once I see it in person. Hey, I have tomorrow at two or four, which one works better for you? Or do mornings or afternoons typically work better, right? And you always give the two options, right? Mornings or afternoons, or you give two or four, right? And you have them pick which one works better for them. So let's say they say, okay, great. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. You know, 4 p.m. tomorrow works. Uh, okay, sounds good. I'll go ahead and pencil you in. I'm going to go ahead and send you some information about us before you come out there. And we typically will send out either an email that has links to our reviews. It has samples of properties that we've sold. It's like our resume, like an online resume. And I'll show you in a second where to find that. Or we can even send them a package in the mail, depending on how much time we have, where it's called a pre-listing packet. And it'll be samples of like our flyers, our marketing. And it's kind of like a, a hard copy of what we do, right? But essentially what you're doing is you're setting the tone with the client saying, hey, you know, you're giving them a, a snapshot of what it's gonna be like to work with us. Um, once you book that appointment and it's confirmed, there's two other follow-up questions that you're gonna to wanna to ask. Are they interviewing agents, right? And that's important to understand as well because if they're interviewing other agents, then you're gonna know whether you're going to have to maybe negotiate or, you know, maybe you're going to know who the other agent is, you know, so whatever information, you know, is going to, you know, that's going to work in your advantage, right? If you know, they're interviewing this other guy down the street and you know them and you know what they do and who they are and what their track record is, it's like knowing who your competition is, then you could find what differentiates you from the competition. So, uh, Hey, by the way, you know, uh, I'll see you tomorrow at two. Great. Uh, hey, by the way, really quick, you know, are you guys, uh, you know, do you guys have any other agents you're talking to or plan to interview? And then, um, you know, how will you guys decide who you work with? You know, so it's a simple question. And they may say, oh, no, you're the only person we've talked to. Great. If we're the only person they've talked to, that's great for us, you know. But if it's like, well, actually, I have three other agents coming by as well. So I'm going to interview all, you know, you and three other agents, right? Then, you know, if they say that, well, how will you decide who you eventually work with? You know, and you want to know how the client thinks because the client may say, well, we're looking for the best agent who can get us the most money. Or they may say, well, I'm looking for the cheapest agent, the agent who does it the cheapest, who charges less, right? You want to know how your client thinks because there's some clients that value service and results. And there's some clients that strictly value cost, right? All they're focused on is what does it cost me? You know, so. In those situations, we may have to adapt to get the deal. Closing question. This is extremely important. This is a part that a lot of people are afraid to ask. The closing question. If when we meet and you like everything we say and we agree upon a price and a marketing plan, are you ready to get the process started? That's a closing question. And there's no right or wrong answer to that question from the client but it at least, at least allows you to see where the client is at in their decision-making process, right? Let me repeat that again. Hey, if when we meet and you like everything we say and we agree upon the price and the marketing plan, are you ready to get the process started? And the client may say, yeah, you know, if everything sounds good, yeah, we're, we're ready. Or the client may say, well, we may have to think about it or we may have to, you know, we just kind of want to get some information first. Hey, not a problem you know, will definitely help, you know, get you that information you need. You know, so 
this is going to allow you to know like, all right, is this a hot client who's ready to go? And I need to go in and try to close that deal. Or, hey, this is a client that maybe might be a nurturer. There might be, might be a couple steps involved, you know, because some clients haven't fully decided that they're ready to sell. They're still doing their homework and their research, and they're still meeting with people first. All right, let's open it up for questions, guys. What questions do you have here on this part of it? There's got to be some questions on some of this, on the appointment, on the interviewing part, on the closing question. Uh, well, these mostly, I feel like, you know, it's from sphere of influence, but where else would you might like run into someone selling is that on Zillflex? Um, Cause I feel like when I reach out to people about selling on the pond, it's just like, they just usually are like, no, we're getting five. Got it. So was your question, where do you get, where do you get sellers from? Yeah. I mean, I'm like, it's most likely your sphere, right. Or does Zillflex offer that as well? Um, so, yeah, so that, that's a good question. Um, that's a little off topic on where you get, you know, I more want to focus on the script, but just to kind of give you a quick answer. Um, yeah, sellers, a lot of them come from your sphere. A lot of them can be buyers who need to sell, right? So even the Zillow Flex buyers that come in, a lot of them have property that they need to sell, right? Um, you know, you can network with people, you can farm a certain neighborhood, you can call for sale by owners, right? There's a lot of ways to go out there and, and look for sellers. But a big, big part of finding sellers is uh, sphere of influence. That's a big one. That's probably a, you know, a big percentage of how we get a lot of sellers just by being in the business and being active and people knowing what we do. And then also when we sell a property in a neighborhood, being able to farm that existing neighborhood where we just listed a property. So let's say like your cousin refers you, you know, someone or your cousin wants to sell and you sell their property. Now you leverage that property you're selling to tap into the other neighbors around there. You go meet them, you go show them what you do, show them how you market your property, let them know what it's sold for. And there's always going to be people in any given area that are thinking about selling. And then you just got to build the relationship. So selling is definitely a nurture process. Um, we do have leads that come in for sellers who just inquired about maybe like their home value and stuff like that. But usually, you know, these are nurtures as well. You're going to have to nurture them until they're ready to sell. Uh, and like I said before, um, and it started off, what I started off with in this training is selling is not an overnight decision, right? So it's really hard to find overnight sellers, right? It's usually a, a process where they thought about it, they talked about it, and they finally say, okay, we're ready to pull the trigger, right? So you being there throughout that process, being the one that advises them, gives them information, stays in touch with them, keeps them informed on the market is, is going to help you build that credibility so that once they are ready to sell, they reach out to you. Like Diana's seller right now, right? That was a referral. Was it from a cousin? Diana? Yeah, it was from my cousin. He was, he's a realtor, a broker here, but he moved out of state because of cost of living or whatever. So yeah, it was his past client. He helped him get him in that unit. There you go. Right. So that was a referral. So yeah, a lot of sellers come from referrals, come from, you know, basically your sphere of influence. And then, of course, you can go out there and try to find sellers through door knocking, cold calling, stuff like that, uh, and start to build a pipeline of people that you're, you're in touch with. Okay. Someone typed in a question. Yeah, buyers who need to sell to buy. Yep, there's a lot of them who sell to buy. Absolutely. All right, here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to role play this. Right? So let's say you did find a seller or you, you got a potential seller lead right? Um, and you're trying to book the appointment, we're going to walk through this script and we're going to role play it like in a conversational manner. Um, I'm going to role play it for you guys. And then you guys answer the questions who would like to be the, the seller and I'll be the agent. I want you guys to see how I do it. You guys get the easy part. You get to be the agent. I mean, the, I'm sorry, the seller. You don't have to be the, uh, I'll do it. Okay, Andre. 
Okay, Andre, you're gonna be the you're gonna be the seller, and then let's set the stage, right? So I got a referral. You know, you were a, a past client of mine. Let's say you're a past client, right? I helped you buy a property several years ago. You reached out to me saying, you know, hey, I'm we're thinking of selling. And now I'm calling you to kind of go through the seller qualifier script, right? And you're thinking of selling because you want to, uh, you're getting a job relocation and you need to move out of state, right? So ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, Enrique. Uh, Zandra here from a blah, blah, blah place or in San Jose. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I'm calling you. <laughs> oh, my bad. Uh, so I know because I felt like I wanted to, to sell my house, right? Yeah, I'm calling you. You reached out to me and I'm calling you back to try to yeah. book the appointment, right? I was, yeah. Okay. All right. So say hello. Hello. Hey, Andre. Hey, how's it going? It's Enrique, PRG Real Estate. Hey, how you doing? How's life been? Good, good, man. Hey, uh, thanks for reaching out to me. You know, I, I got your text the other day, um, you know, saying you, you're thinking of maybe, you know, making a move. And I uh, just wanted to connect with you and, and chat a little bit. You have, you have a minute now? Yeah, yeah. We're moving to Nebraska, so I'm trying to get my house on the market as soon as possible. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, I mean, tell me about that. What, what made you decide to, to pull the trigger or to go that way? Uh, we were talking with the wife and we wanted to open a Husky farm. So we decided to go out to Nebraska. Wow. A Husky farm. Oh, okay. Well, that's mm. awesome. And have you guys already, uh, and I'm, and I'm going to, I'm going to speak to this right as I'm saying it, right. Motivation and timing, right. So you guys are moving out to, uh, to Nebraska. Um, how soon are you guys trying to make that move? Do you have you guys thought about that? The time frame is. Yeah, my my uh my grandmother's out there, so we were thinking about making a transition about two months, um, maybe finding a place near her too. Okay. So we, we we've kind of located a couple places, and we've been considering checking out Zillow and such, you know. Okay. But uh, with that in mind, we're fin finalizing the offer, and we ideally would want to get the house sold. Um before or during the transition so we can have the money available to put it towards the, uh, the payment got it got it so your plan your plan is to get this one sold and then you want to buy something out there correct got correct. it okay on a mortgage okay. for tax benefits and such got it got it okay and do you guys need the money from this this sale to to get that other home in nebraska would help not? yeah but uh you know we, we can make it work without it Okay, good. And that, that makes it a lot easier, right? You know, cause then it, we can get this one sold and make sure we maximize, you know, your, your price and all that stuff. And, you know, it's less stressful when you, when you have them both tied together. Okay, good. Um, now tell me about the condition of the property. I know I helped you buy this home like, you know, three years ago, so I haven't seen it since then. Uh, tell me about it. Have you guys done anything to the property since, you know, since you guys bought it or what would you say the condition it's in right now? Or is there anything you think would need to be you know, addressed or fixed before putting it on the market. Yeah. Um, speaking of the Huskies, uh, they've dug a huge holes in our backyard and uh, the interior scratched up all the wood. It's scraped. Okay. So we might need to fix that. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so what I'm hearing is, you know, fix up the yard a little bit, right. Kind of get that cleaned up and then maybe, maybe some new flooring or see if we can refinish the floors. Yeah. Other than that, uh, the exterior looks great. Um, yeah, I, I, that's all I can really think of. How's the paint looking in the inside and outside? Oh, um, it could use a new touch. It, it's not very modern. It's a kind of a bright blue color. Okay. Um, maybe a white paint can make it look more up to date. Got it. Yeah, definitely. And when we come out there, you know, what I want to do is come out to your property and then we'll be able to go over all that. We'll be able to walk the property. I'll be able to, you know, give you some advice on what things you should focus on so that we, you can get the most money for your property in today's market and also get it sold the fastest, right? So you can make your move. Okay. That would uh, help so much. Okay, great, great. Um, and then um, do you guys still owe anything on the property? No, we're paid off. Oh, you guys are paid off. Awesome, mm -hmm. man. That, that, makes, that makes life easier, right? Indeed. Yeah. Less to worry. Okay. Okay, great, great. And then Andre, um, I'm curious, do you have any idea of what your home may be worth? Have you been looking online, Zillow, Redfin, any of those sites? Or what do you think it's worth today? Uh, I, I couldn't tell you really. Um, my focus has been purely tunnel vision on this new uh, area. I've been really searching there. Um, I could really use a good estimate if you're able to provide that. Okay. Is there a certain price you would like to sell it for if you had a 
you could pick like a realistic price a little over um the estimate ideally um nothing too significant maybe like a couple hundred thousand dollars extra like two to three all right yeah i mean definitely we'll definitely look into that and see if that's feasible um you know it's been a little while so i, I would want to do some research and when i come out there I'll be able to provide you with all that information. We'll go into the market, you know, in depth and we'll walk through it and I'll give you some ideas of what we think it could sell for in kind of a ballpark range. And then of course, ultimately it depends, you know, once we put it on the market, but at least you'll have a good idea of where you stand. Great. And then um, is it just you and your wife making the decision? Was there anybody else, you know, that was involved in the decision-making or? Um, no. No. Well, just you two. Okay. Correct. And how, how does your wife feel about the whole thing? How does she feel about selling? Um, she hates it here. So she's can't wait to get out. Oh, know. so she's good to go. All right. So she wants to yeah. sell. She's good to go. Okay. Good, man. I mean, that, that all, that all makes sense. Uh, that's, that's good to know. Okay. All right, Andre. So, I mean, here's, here's what I recommend, you know, based on all this information and kind of what you just told me, I definitely want to set a time to come to your home. We'll go over all the options, you know, with you and your wife. And then I'm going to go ahead and walk you through like the different things we do to get your home ready to sell and get the most money for your property and get it sold in today's market. And I'll give you some different options, different strategies, and we'll look at the repairs and what stuff we should focus on. And we'll come up with a game plan. So you know exactly what you need to do to get the property sold. Um, I have some time this week. Uh, to meet with you guys, Does, do mornings or afternoons typically work for you? Um, do, do nights work for you? Yeah, I can do like in the e early evening. What what time's a good time when you guys are both home? Around six thirty. Six thirty. Okay, I think that's that's I can make that work. Uh, how about uh, Thursday? Thursday around six thirty. Does that work? Yeah, that should be fine. All right, sounds good. And then what I'll can you do send me a reminder if that's possible? Yeah, I'll send you a reminder. I have your email still um, here. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and shoot you a calendar invite. And then I'm also going to send you uh, an email that just kind of outlines, you know, some of the different things that we do. So at least you kind of have an understanding of what we offer. Because I know we helped you buy, but maybe you didn't know too much about what we do to sell. So I have a quick little email that I usually send out to my clients before I meet with them. Check it out, you know, you know, look over it for five minutes. And at least this way we can focus on all the things you need to do, you know, for your, your sale, uh, once I meet with you and then, um, really quick, Andre, did you guys, uh, am I the only person that you guys have spoken to so far or, did, or were you planning on, you know, you have any other agents you were talking to about this? I mean, my cousin was recommending, uh, this guy, but I barely know him. And when I met him, he didn't seem, I mean, you know, he didn't seem like the kind of guy I want to sell in my home. So, okay. Okay, cool. No, I appreciate that. You know, and that, that makes me feel good. Um, I'll definitely come out there and, and, you know, show you what we do and, and, you know, earn your business and then we'll go from there. And then really quick, Andre, um, you know, when we meet, if everything looks good and we can agree upon, you know, the marketing plan, the strategy and all that stuff, are you guys ready to get the ball rolling? hundred uh, percent. The sooner, the better. Okay, great. So you guys have decided that this is what you want to do. Correct. Okay. All right. Sounds good, Andre. Well, hey, thanks so much. It's good connecting with you again. I'll be out there Thursday at 630. Uh, tell your wife I said hello, and then I look forward to meeting you guys then, and we'll, we'll go over everything. Always a pleasure, Enrique. Have a good day. All right. Bye. All right, y'all. That's how it's done. <laughs> Who thinks they can do that? Raise your hand if you think you can pull that off. Give me some feedback. Do you guys think that was difficult? Do you see I was actually just reading the thing word for word, almost word for word, but I was saying it in a conversational manner, right? I was saying it in a way that just sounded like a conversation. Um, it wasn't like, what is your plan and your motivation to sell, right? It wasn't that. I was like, hey, and, you know, I was making it loose and casual. Hey, so, you know, what are you guys' plans? You know, what, what's taking you to Nebraska? And then you let them talk, right? And then I just moved it down to the next one. Did that, give me some feedback guys and feel free to unmute yourself. What did you notice about the conversation? It was um, focused that keeps you from going off tangent, off subject and keeps you on what you need to really focus on. And it was pretty yeah. easy to follow. Easy to follow, absolutely. Smooth and natural is what Miles wrote. 
Who else? Did anyone else? What What's your feedback? What did you notice about it? Um, it felt like a conversation. It felt like two buddies catching up. It was just natural. And yep, two buddies yeah. catching up. Natural. Felt like a conversation. Exactly. Anything else? Anything else you guys notice? Oh, you repeated and um and um affirmed, especially when he was telling you about the uh, the 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 mess that the dogs caused. Yeah. You repeated it still, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah." Okay, yeah. Repeat and approve, right? Hey, let me just to make sure I'm yeah, repeat, repeat and approve. <laughs> yep. Make sure I'm understanding you correctly, you know. So we gotta maybe address the backyard and maybe do something with the floors, right? So I was as he told me the information, I was saying it back to him, which kept us engaged and in rapport. Right. Uh, Juan Castillo said, I like the phrase meet to earn your business, right? I didn't just assume that he's going to work with me, even though he, he sounded like he was, he sounded like he was already deciding, you know, and that's why he called me, but it was like, Hey, when we go out there, I want to make sure we meet and we, we earn your business. Right. Uh, Thomas wrote, it was all about them. Yes. It was all about them. Did you, did you hear me talk much about myself? I, I don't even think I said much about myself at all, actually. Right. I didn't say this is how many reviews we have and all that stuff. I kept the focus all about them and all about what their goals were and what they were trying to do, right? And how I was able to fit myself in there to help them get what they want. And I think, I, I like that you pointed that out, Thomas, because I think that's a big one. A lot of times we get caught up with trying to impress a client, right? Like, oh, look at me. This is what we do. Look at me, right? And really when someone sells, it's, it's, it is really all about them. Right. It's all about you being a part of the journey, but they are the superstar. They are the hero in this. You're not the hero. Right. So it's a mindset shift where you're not making yourself the hero. You're making the client the hero and you're being there as a part of their journey. Right. So making it all about them and focusing on what they got to do and sounding excited for them and all that stuff is going to really make them feel like you're on their team and you're on their side. Right. Anything else? Any other feedback? Teddy, what'd you notice? It, it was conversational and um, you you were pushing for the appointment, but you were also building that rapport and seeing how, uh, what is it called? Like uh, re ready to go they were. Yeah. Was there any pressure? Did it seem like there was any pressure I was putting on them? No. And, and even though, even though I was, you know, going in for the close, like, hey, when we meet, are you guys ready to get the ball, the ball rolling, you know, or to get the process started? I said it in a way that didn't sound like I'm putting pressure on you. It was just casual. Hey, cool, man. And when we meet, if everything sounds good, you guys, you know, ready to get the ball, you know, the ball rolling. It wasn't like, are you ready to, and that's, that's intentional, right? There's a reason I didn't say, all right, when we meet, are you ready to sell your house? I said, are you ready to get the ball rolling? Or are you ready to get the process started? Or are you ready to get, you know, move things forward, right? You want to take away those words, like sell your house, do all this stuff, you know, buy. I even like when someone wants to sell, I just say, oh, you guys are looking to make a move. You know, that is, I do that all on purpose to kind of make it more casual and make it more loose and make it more fun and, and friendly, right? We don't want to sell like we're just someone trying to close and sell them and hard sell them. You don't, you don't win people like that. Uh, Brenda wrote, came off very trustworthy and expert in how to get the house sold. Yep. And that comes from confidence, guys. It's, it's the confidence. Number one is I know the script, right? I've rehearsed the script. I wrote this script, right? Um, I've rehearsed it. I've used it, you know, hundreds and hundreds of times you know, in different ways or forms, you know? And so I'm able to say it confidently, you know, because I know the information and I'm able to just make it really casual, right? So the impression they're gonna get is like, okay, he's not trying to close me, he's not trying to sell me, but he is someone that, you know, it's helping me get to the finish line. So guys, in order to get to that level, number one is you're gonna have to practice this on your own, right? Now we did a deep dive, and we're going to end with this. We did a deep dive on what to say, how to say it, but now it's up to you to print this thing out and to 
role play it, say it in a conversational manner, role play it on each other and try to emulate and try to do it the exact way that I just did it, right? That same, you know, tone, the same, you know, casualness and stuff like that, but still maintaining, you know, the professionalism and, and, and stuff like that. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to require you to do this over and over and over until it becomes natural, you know? Um, so here's your homework. Your homework today is I'm going to send, I'm going to send you guys this, this thing. I want you guys to print it out. If you have some time right now, maybe spend 15 minutes right now with each other, pick a partner. If you're in the office and just role play it real quick, just role play it, role play it with each other. And then next week, when we meet again for script training, we're going to have one of you guys now role play it. Right? That's your time to perform. So you need to make sure you have practiced ahead of time so that next week you're ready to perform, right? You're ready to do it live. You guys good for that? All right. I'm going to drop it in Slack right now. I'll put the PDF in there, uh, print it out, download it, save it, you know, to your desktop, save it to your phone. The two scripts you need to know. What are the two scripts you need to know at all times? LP Mama and SQS. LP Mama and SQS. And actually, there's three. There's the ALM. ALM. Right? ALM is just a shortened version of, of LP Mama, basically, right? But that's specific for Zillow Flex. So the three scripts you need to master is the LP Mama. The ALM, which is basically the uh, the shortened version of LP Mama for, for Zillow Flex, and the SQS, which is the seller questionnaire. Very simple, guys. It's not a lot of information. It's just it's more about the repetition and more about the practice, but the information itself is not really complicated at all. It's they're basic questions. You just got to work on how you deliver the questions, the way you say it. So spend some time. You want to get good at this, guys? I'm telling you, this right here is the work you need to do on a daily basis, right? You need to spend 15, 20 minutes of just practicing the script. Because then once you get in front of a client, you're at an open house, you're on the phones, you're door knocking, anything like that, then you're going to be able to come off natural and you'll be able to be confident and you'll be able to build rapport and get the client to put their guard down and you'll be able to book those appointments, right? The person who knows these scripts the best and delivers them the best will make the most money in real estate. You'll have an unfair advantage over other people who are choppy and not confident. Trust me, guys. This is sales, right? The better you are at these sales skills, and then of course you got to do the work, you got to take action. The better you are at these sales skills, the more income potential that you can make in the long run. All right, I'm gonna let you guys go. Thanks for showing up today. Um, hope you guys got some value. Let's give a round of applause for showing up, showing up and doing the work. I'll put this, I'll drop this script in uh, Slack right now, print it out, practice it, and then we'll see you guys next week for script practice. Let's go.